Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I'm re-recording because we lost the recording this morning. It is September 2nd. The chapter is Genesis 5. I'm going to keep it simple because it's about genealogies. This is the book, the fifth chapter of Genesis, as I'm going to read to everybody. This is the book of the generations of Adam, the day that God created man in the likeness of God, made he him. In other words, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, Elohim, created us in their image. As we've read in the previous chapters, male and female created he them, that was the Godhead, he, them, and blessed them and called them their name, Adam in the day, when they were created. The Gospel of Matthew 19, chapter 19, verse 4, comes into agreement with this. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image. And he called his name Seth. And in the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years, and he begot sons and daughters. In other words, Adam fathered with Eve, son and daughters. And when you take the 800 years and the 130, Adam lived to be 930 years old. In reflecting on all this, this whole genealogy is based upon a time when God had everybody being fruitful and multiply. And it gives us this record here in Genesis 5 that God's in control. And even in learning all this right now, we get to understand that God is always in control in our lives as he was in, in the beginning. And Seth lived. It says Seth lived 105 years and he begot Enos. And Seth lived after he begot Enos 807 years, he got sons and daughters, and all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. And one of the things I always add in, and I added in when I read this, I don't know what happened earlier today, brothers and sisters. This is the first time in all these years I've had to reread a chapter, but. Sometimes we learn patience and we slow down a little, and that's what God is trying to even teach a, a brother like me right now. But sometimes you just got to wait on the Lord, be anxious in nothing but by prayer and supplication. And so many people today think they can do something, but we all, we all got to wait upon the Lord. So this is good practice for me as a brother. And Enos lived 90 years and he got Tyana. And Enos lived after he got Tyana. 815 years and he got sons and daughters. So this, the, the early genealogy of creation shows that God allowed them to live many, many years. And I'm pretty amazed at this because God's really the one that calls all the shots for whether we live or die or breathe. And God can give us an extension because he's timeless. He's the beginning and the end. And when, when you realize that, the whole thing here with Adam and Eve falling into sin was that was the first Adam. That's how sin came into the world. And Jesus Christ became the redeemer. And he brought us back to God. And that's the most beautiful thing about learning scripture and understanding God's plan for man. That Adam caused sin and death to come. And Jesus Christ, our Lord, became the second Adam, spiritually speaking. To redeem us from the curse when he hung on the tree and to give us everlasting life in which there is no second death for those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
just like we can understand how it all began, we can also know how it's all going to end. Going back to scripture this afternoon, and all the days of Enos was 905 years, and then he died. And Canaan lived 70 years, and he died. Mahala lived. And Canaan lived after he begot Mahala lived 840 years, and he got sons and daughters. And all the days of Canaan were 910 years, and he died. And Mahala lived lived 60 and 5 and begot Jared. And it's just a good understanding to realize how God gave these families hundreds of years to be fruitful and multiply. As we look at the numbers, we've never seen anything like that in modern time. This is all part of the God's plan of creation and how he started everything. And as Christians and believers, this is scripture. And all we got to do is believe that the word became flesh, dwelt amongst us. And so all scriptures for teaching us. And I look at this sometimes as we can't put the good Lord above in a box. And so many people today point fingers and try to dissect who's saved, who isn't saved. When in reality, God's the only one that knows the heart. And I see, I see so much uh, factioning in between modern Christians today. This one thinks they know it. That one thinks they know it. And, and scripture just teaches us that all we got to do is believe in God and, and believe that God sent his only begotten son. And he cleared it up in the New Testament when he said, we're saved by grace. It's a gift from God. It's free. And, you know, I grew up singing those songs. Who can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And, and that's him being crucified, resurrected from the dead and bestowing on us everlasting life which means eternal life and the bible teaches us that it teaches us as you get into reading god's word that we're comforted by god you know in the conclusion this morning i i finished and i'll refinish again today with the scriptures i thought were recorded earlier brothers and sisters and it's kind of fun for me to reminisce and do something like this, so bear with me this afternoon. And 910 years, and then Kayanin died, and Mahalalel lived 60 and five years, and he begat, as I said, Jared. And Mahalalel lived after he begot Jared 830 years, and begot sons and daughters again in all the days of Mahalalel for 895 years, and then he died. It gets really interesting in this fifth chapter of Genesis, because as I was saying this morning, and I'll relate, because I don't have an audience right now, I'm just rereading what I was reading this morning, and Jared lived 160 and two years, and he begot, and this is the most amazing part of chapter five, is this individual called Enoch. And, and Jared lived after he begot Enoch 800 years and begot again sons and daughters. So God was allowing all these, these individuals to be fruitful, not just for as we see it today, you know. Women usually, when they get to be about 40 years old, that's the end of procreating. That's the end of them really having children. We live in a time frame that's different. We'll see that when we go into chapter six and seven with Noah coming on the scene. But Enoch lived 800 and years and he begot sons and daughters. 
and all the days of Jared were 962 years, and he died. So he actually lived longer than Adam. So, you know, God's different to everybody, and I see that even in modern Christianity. Sometimes God takes people home before three score and 10 years. Sometimes he allows people to live in their 80s, their 90s. And there's even some people today in our world that lives to be 100, 110. But beyond that, you don't see much of that anymore. So, you know, and I can only think about why when we get out of five, get into six, seven, eight, and we understand that it was, it was evil and wickedness that caused God to act, and what did he act against? What I talked about in chapter four, we're always being tempted. Sin is always knocking at the door, you know? And, and the desire of the enemy is, is to rule over us and keep us away from our walk with God. That's the whole thing about spiritual warfare. That's why it's very difficult because the flesh is filthy. So we're all like filthy rags, but God gives us the power and authority to take thoughts captive and resist the devil. And I don't know what people, sin is sin. It doesn't matter, big sin, little sin, you know, some of us that came out of Roman Catholicism and everything, we always got beat over the head that this sin is worse than all sin is, is contrary and disobedience and rebellion to God's word. I say it all the time. And that's why I'm a sinner saved by grace. And I thank God for the mercy and the free gift that all I have to do is put my faith in Jesus Christ and walk with him the best I can because he knows my heart. He knows I get up every day to serve him, whether I'm perfect or not perfect, I try. And then we have the enemy who's trying to steal, kill, destroy. How about deception? You know, being the deceiver. He was the father of lies. So we have to look at this spiritual enemy, even though we can't see him. The Bible says he's real. Jesus called them unclean spirits. He didn't have to walk around with a, a book saying this is the name of this demon and that demon all god requires from his sheep is that we hear his voice and follow him so there's there's a lot to be said about if you're really born again sometimes you know the born again man is spiritual or woman there's neither male nor female in christ and we, we look at enoch and and the reason i say this is this morning i quoted to the audience i said you know enoch that's somebody I want to talk to when I get to heaven. Because he was different than everybody else here in the fifth chapter. And it says, and Enoch lived 60 and five years, he begot Methuselah. And Enoch, it says here, he walked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. All of a sudden, you look at this example here, who Enoch is in the Bible. There's not really much spoken about him. There's some other scriptures throughout the Bible that mention him. But on the 365 years, and it said, again, you know, second time inside of four verses, Enoch did what? He walked with God. So I'm assuming he was paying attention to God in order to walk with him. And, you know, in Jesus, in the Gospels, he says, my sheep hear my voice and follow me. So I'm kind of thinking that this guy Enoch was listening to what he was communicating with God, and he was walking with God, and I guess doing God's will. I wasn't there to supervise anybody. This is just me reading my Bible. And when Enoch walked with God, he was not, for God took him. And that's how, you know, and it references Hebrews 11.5 in the New Testament. That's why it's so imperative, not just to read the Bible, but search the scriptures to get a mindset on God's heart and what 
he's trying to show us about the nature and the attributes of God. And, and God's no respecter of persons. He treats everybody the same way, you know? And he's, he, 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 he came to save sinners. I always tell people that. And to sit there and point fingers at people, well, we're supposed to pray for everyone. We're supposed to bless our enemies. Now, there's, there's so much in scripture that people can go back and forth with. There's so many debates even in the body of Christ and modern Christianity. But there's one thing that I always see in scripture that's really simple. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your house shall be saved. You can look at that in many different ways. Naturally, you want your whole family, your immediate family to come to Christ. But what about your body being the temple of the Holy Spirit? Today, you know, in the Old Testament, the test. The temple was a building, a structure. Today they meet in churches, but the early church, they met in catacombs, caves, and little houses, not mega buildings. You know, you, you tend to understand, you know, if Jesus couldn't do miracles because of doubt and unbelief in his own hometown, what's that to say about huge assemblies today? Maybe that's one of the reasons we don't see the miracles that were going on in the early church because the miracles were going on. People were getting healed of diverse diseases. Uh, devils were being cast out of multitudes of people and it was Jesus's ministry, but there's very little spoken about that in the church. And a lot of churches talk about it and they tell people they, they, you're always gonna have demons and everything else. I don't see that in the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, other than any warns that if you don't keep your house in order, they're gonna come back seven times worse. And you know, I think the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom that when you have an awesome God that you believe in, and you, you know, in Mary and Martha and the, the gospel, Martha was still worried about the outside and Mary was sitting at Jesus's free feet learning about that the kingdom of God is within us and it's the application to the teachings of our savior that can bring forth the spiritual walk and we could see how God's grace can be so effective against Satan and the demons they know who's who's walking and who isn't remember they tremble at the name of Jesus not the, they don't tremble at our names you know, they understand who their enemy is. The, the enemy of the enemy is, is people that believe in the word of God. When you believe in word of God, you put it in application. That's when you see God's glory and the effectiveness of the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit that dwells within all of us according to our faith. You know, and I'm, I'm just giving you my little opinion here as I'm reading this because... Methuselah lived 180 and seven years. It says here, lived 180 and seven years and begot Lamech. And Methuselah lived, begot Lamech, 780 and two years and begot sons and daughters. So, you know, it never gives us a, a clear amount of how fruitful they were, but if you just think about it boy these guys lived a long time and that's that was the time because god i guess was making everybody fruitful remember he he commanded it in the in the garden of eden that the woman would put enmity and and the real enmity that came down the pike was jesus christ being born in flesh becoming that redeemer and that's the key to salvation, you know, having faith in Christ. I mean, there is no other name. You know, he's king of kings, lord of lords. According to scripture, the more you study it, the more your faith grows, the more you listen to his teachings and put them into application, the stronger you grow spiritually. 
you're, you're able to resist the things of the past, some of the lust of the flesh. All you got to do is start putting it into practice and resisting the devil. And the Bible's clear. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. So you have to take an action of refusal. You have to, you know, we learned it in War on the Saints. You have to recognize it is the enemy operating. You take every thought captive to the mind of Christ. You know, and I look at this whole group here that I'm trying to study and read and expound on today. And God gave them such a measure of grace and time to multiply. And, and, and then I think about the 12 disciples and the 70 and how God didn't need a big army. He just needed a handful of faithful people. And when we get into the, the readings here in Genesis and we get into all the different things from Babel to Sodom and Gomorrah and everything, and we dig into the, the word of God, God was always with his people. But it wasn't until the New Testament that we received the New Testament ratified in the blood of Jesus Christ. Everything points to Christ when you start really getting into reading your Bible. And that causes us, I think, to have that, that love affair, like Christ so loved the world, you know, when the Father loved everybody, said, I'm going to send my son to redeem him, and you're going to be married to the Lord. It's like, it's, it's typified as a, a, a marriage celebration, and we can become joint heirs with Jesus Christ, just like when a man and a woman become one. When they leave their families and they go get married, they they get a they get a brand new start. They come out of the nest, so to speak, and they have to raise their own families. And that was the whole drift I get out of this, because God never turned his back, even to the point of Abraham when we read about him. And it says here in, in Scripture today, and all the days. Of Methuselah, his were 969 years, and then he died. And, and the most radical thing here is all these guys were dying except Enoch. And Lamech lived 182 and begot a son, and he called his son. And here we go. Our first introduction at the end of chapter five, we're being told about Noah. Noah saying, this say, shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. And you go back to the beginning in the garden, and I put that in my first warfare prayer many years ago, 11 and a half years back, the sweat of our face, the thorns and the thistles. I was reminding everybody in this morning's group that the thorn and the thistles is, is from the curse. And, and here we are, our good Lord and Savior, they put a crown of thorns on. And he had to, he had to do that, a blood sacrifice for all people, a one and done offering for the salvation of souls. And it took a perfect lamb, our Lord Jesus Christ. And He's the one that took the curse of the whole world and put it on his shoulders. And he turned around and he asked the father to forgive him and that it was finished. And basically, that, that was my game plan in life when I realized that I needed to put my faith in someone. Just like I, I hear so many testimonies of so many people once we're lost, now we're saved. And realizing we were owned by the devil for a good part of our existence. And yet Satan had us bound. And Jesus set us free. So this is like, to me, it's a very important of my time in the Lord to be able to sit and share my opinion and my thoughts with other people and report it. Everything I do is freely you receive, freely you give. You know, hopefully God will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. 
It's not about money. It's about winning souls. It's about getting people to believe in Jesus Christ. There's no gain for me whether you get saved or not. You know? My blessings come because I'm just being obedient. I'm trying to be a servant to everybody. I don't ask anybody anything other than give Jesus a shot in their life. Very important. A wise man wins souls. If you're going to do something all the days of your life, trust God, obey, and go out there and be an ambassador for his kingdom. It all comes freely. And it's done according to our faith. You know, if you don't have the zeal, you don't have the boldness, ask God for it. If you don't have wisdom, you can ask God for it. Every day in our prayer group, we lose wisdom, knowledge, understanding, the seven spirits of the Lord. You know, the fervent prayer of righteous people availeth much, but we're only made righteous because we put our faith in Jesus Christ. I speak all the time about, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And if you don't think I have my struggles at my age, you didn't get older yet. I, I'm already an older brother. I, I've lived a decent life. He saved me. I know my Savior. Am I perfect? No. There's nobody perfect, only Jesus Christ. Perfect means you got pride and you think that you don't make mistakes. And you know what? You're not teachable or you're putting God in a box. You're, you, the devil's got you accusing. If you don't do it this way and do it that way, you don't know God. Wait a minute. What about grace? What about a, God's grace? Ephesians 2, 8. A gift. A gift from God so that no man or woman can boast. You know? I learned enough in the Gospels when Jesus said, hey, you know, and I'm talking from experience. Who am I to point a finger? I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Otherwise, there's no grace. Then you don't need a savior. Because if you can save yourselves and be perfectly in everything you do, then you don't need God. You know. God came to save sinners, not self-righteous people. Read your Bibles. I don't want to go on here. It's like a little preaching sermon for me when I do the, any book in this Bible because everything points to Jesus Christ. Gets you off your high horse and puts you on the gospel train. You know, you want to do something? Get up every day, work with your hands, work unto your employers as working unto God, and be a light wherever God puts you. In other words, wherever you stand, wherever you go, let your light shine for the kingdom of God. You never know who's watching you. So anyway, and he called them Noah, saying, this same shall comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. Because something terrible was coming down the pike here. You know, and God was faithful to this whole role in the first, I'd say, eight or nine chapters of the Bible. You know, when he made us, we were made in his image. So there was a part of us that I truly believe even couldn't keep, the demons couldn't even keep the demoniac in Mark 5 from reaching out and crying out for Jesus. That's how much no power the enemy really has once you're seeking God. That's why you can do all things through Christ. There's no excuse. People that have excuses need a, a little increase in your faith. And how does that come? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Naturally, if you hear God's word, you're going to start obeying it. It's like God's the pilot and He's given you a free gift, and all he wants you to do is acknowledge him. You know, I just look at demons sometimes, and I say, you know, you got to be mad at us. We, we get a free ride. You were with them and saw them, and you're not blessed anymore because you rebelled against them. 
we get grace because we can confess our sins and God forgives us. There's no forgiveness for this, the unclean spirits. Man hasn't seen God face to face yet. You know, and a lot of people think it's God talking to them in their heads sometimes. And, you know, I feel bad for people like that because they're not reading the word of God. You know, God's given us what the, the enemy knows is an instruction book. And that's what I choose to read every day of my life right now so that maybe I could be a little bit better at being a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and Lamech lived after he begot Noah 595 years, and he begot sons and daughters. You know, what I get out of this is all these people were teaching their kids. Today's world, it's upside down. We've thrown God out of school. Churches have become social clubs. If you don't do this, you're wrong. You do that. You're wrong. And God, you can't. You, you got to do it the way God says to do it right here. And yet God did so many miracles and saved so many. What about the backsliders? What, what about everybody that we read about in the Bible that should have lost their salvation for some of the, the wicked, horrible things they did? And the only thing we can really lose is if we blaspheme God, you know? Just about every sin is forgiven except blaspheme in the Holy Ghost. That's the only thing I see in the Bible. I know plenty of people that have killed people and everything else, and they're praising God. I know plenty of people that were into heavy metal or rock and rollers, even people that think this is wrong and that's wrong. But if a man falls on his knees, repents, and cries out to God, and you don't know the man, how are you going to point a finger at someone? God's the only one that knows the individual that's crying out for him. I'd be careful with pointing fingers today. Because some people just blatantly take something that someone else says and runs with it, and you got up until your last breath. I've seen too many Christians right now that point fingers over crazy things, and yet Someone that wasn't saved gets saved right at their deathbed. And I've had family members that way. So I have a lot to talk about when people want to hear me. But all the days of Lamech, it says here in the end, were 770 and seven years and he died. And then it gives an age here on Noah. And then we're going to go to chapter six following. This is just the end of the genealogy of uh, what God was doing here in the beginning. And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat three guys. You know, he begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. He fathered them according to the word of God. So if that's what God's telling us. That's what we have to believe. And I, you know, it was very interesting today when I was ending my little thought pattern here because I was talk about so many things because I like to preach and I, you know I like to I like to mingle with other believers sometimes to hear their hearts because sometimes you hear things when you're talking to people you can understand you know some people are confused but God doesn't give us a spirit of fear he doesn't give us confusion he gives us power love and a sound mind all you got to do is ask him to do things. You ask, you receive. You, you sin, you repent. Repentance and godly sorrow comes every time you read your Bible. Because there's something there for everybody in the book. You know? As I'm saying, we're, we're in the beginning of the Old Testament. As Steve said, there's plenty for us to see Jesus. And there's no better place to be every day in your life than spending time in the word of God. I, I have a new brother that fellowships with me and he says, man, I just love it. I'm reading it. You know, I met him weeks back. He says, I'm reading Old Testament, New Testament, at least the scripture from each every day. And I said, well, there you go. 
because God is the light. His word is truth. Sanctification comes as we continue to read the word of God. And, you know, I don't want to hear people when they've got profanity coming out of their mouth and, and oh, it's just their demons. Well, do something about it. The Bible says no weapon formed against us will prosper. Either you're lazy, slothful, and you like your demons, and you allow the enemy to operate in you. And my Bible says who the Lord Jesus Christ sets free is free indeed. Sometimes we just need to just go after the enemy, you know, attack, 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 as we call it. The Old Testament is a book of the genealogy of Adam, the genealogy, and my pronunciation is not as good as a lot of other people, but God knows what I mean. It tells about Adam's descendants, and the story is not a happy one, but the real facts are the Old Testament closes with, with lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. And, you know, this morning I said that. Malachi chapter 4, verse 6. You drift all the way from Genesis and go to the last book in the Old Testament before Matthew starts. And, and thank God for Jesus Christ becoming the curse on the tree. Or none of us would be saved. You know what? We're so busy pointing fingers at people, we forget who's in charge. We forget that any sinner can in any moment get saved, but we know it all. And, and that's where it hurts my heart because I spend a lot of time every day just asking God to save sinners like me, people that are lost. You know, once I was lost, now I'm found. And I get into the word of God. The New Testament is strictly the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1, verse. Wow. Did we forget it along the way? Before it declares there shall be no more curse. That was, we just read that a few days back when we were finishing up the book of Revelation. That's because, you know what? I said to Steve, what do you want to do? He said, let's go start the book all over again. You know, how many people do you know that just keep reading the Bible, making it part of their daily bread? Not just having one verse and expounding, reading chapters. If we draw close to God and we seek God, he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. I got to keep preaching it. You don't, you don't get faith watching television. Get it, people? You know, I used to watch television many, many, many moons back. It was a waste of time. It's all fantasy. You want to pick up demons? All you got to do is tune into the local networks. What did they do for 1950 years? When there was no TVs, they read their Bibles before those that were being saved. You know, you talk about, everybody talks about everything, but they don't look at themselves in the mirror. The first Adam brought the curse. The last Adam, which I've already shared that today, is Jesus Christ. He redeemed us from the curse. Adam's sin caused thorns to grow. Go back and read Genesis chapter three. I preached it the other day, and I'm a nobody, but I preach it word for word. I talk about it because at least I'm putting my eyes to scripture every day. I don't put my eyes to television. You know, there's certain things I'm learning just to stop. Even my smartphone, I got to be careful with. Computers, you got to be careful with. You know, you go back and read the book of Psalms and look what happened to David. The eyes looking the wrong way. Adam's sin was bad enough. So Jesus, and I, I said it this morning, and 
it affected some of the people in the prayer group. They got excited about it. And it was such a good read this morning that I had to repeat it this afternoon, not word for word. Because my heart was so into it this morning. And I, I always asked to ask God, Lord, you said that you would give the Holy Spirit to those that lift you up. They, they, they would listen and there would be something there that touches everybody. Well, I pray something I'm saying this afternoon touches somebody that's listening. I went on there earlier and seen that I had the wrong message up because someone, someone, there's always someone in our group that wants to play this or that. They hit the screens. They do things with our recording button. They should leave it to the person that's going to do the speak. Because the whole message never got re recorded today. None of us are perfect. But Jesus was. And they mocked him and they put a crown of thorns on him. God made man in his likeness. You remember I said that earlier? But sinful man now begets children in his likeness. We are all born sinners, Psalm 51, 5. But when a sinner is born again through faith in Christ, he, he or she begins to grow into the likeness of the last Adam. In other words, when you're born again, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. I always tell people that. More of Jesus. And I got that from a guy that played rock and roll all over the world. And I learned a song. And he sang it on stage. I want to be more like Jesus. Just the words alone made me want to get up and imitate Christ when I was a baby Christian. I wanted to pray. I wanted to fast. I wanted to do everything. I even got upset when I prayed and fasted and people didn't get out of mir uh, uh, miracles in situations. I said, well, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. You can't use that as a bone to get God. It's your spiritual life, people. It's got to be part of your walking in the spirit to pray, to fast, to do God's will, to pray for others. It's not about us at all. Once you're born again, it's about the kingdom of God, and you want to win souls. You want to bring people into the light of God's word. You want to be like this latest song I love to sing, Speaking Jesus talking to people every day about Jesus, not about football, not about the worldly things that everybody's chasing. That's the devil. Go back and read the Gospel of Mark, the first five chapters. You want to get lit up for the kingdom of God? Do what Jesus did. Start walking in the Spirit. He was led by the Holy Spirit. You read closely. You'll see he was driven in the wilderness by the Spirit of God. And I love adding all this stuff because I preach it over and over again. And so many people don't have ears to hear because they're giving place to that sin that's crouching at the door. A lot of people think sin, sin is caused by the enemy. It's disobedience to the Word of God. And the demons laugh all the way to hell because people... People just get enticed all the time by the enemy through the things in the world, and they think it's normal. The love of the world is enmity between us and the Father. Haven't you read it yet? Wow, do I get off track, don't I? I don't want to interrupt this. Hold on, this is an important call. Yes, can I help you? Yes. Thank you. And this is something I announced this morning in the prayer group, brothers and sisters. It makes me laugh. 
I get to announce it, I would have forgot. Please pray for me. I got a lot of people praying for me because I've had hearing problems for years and didn't even realize it because I never go to the doctor for hearing problems. And finally, one day, I finally mentioned it to my doctors and they sent me for tests and everything. Yeah, okay. I don't receive it, but pray that I don't fall on deaf ears. Pray that God's doing a miracle in me right now while people are praying for me around the country because that's important you know because god still heals i preach it i teach it i've been delivered from maladies already and life continues to be wonderful because why because the bible is the wonderful word of god you'll learn a lot if you just Get away from people sometimes and get alone and read your Bibles. You know, ask, knock, seek. All those are wonderful things when you get into the spiritual world. So let's go back to this. Eight times in chapter five, you find the sobering phrase, and he died. Death is an appointment, not an accident. I always like to talk about this because sin was reigning. Death was also reigning. Romans 5.14 and 5.17. But in the life of Enoch, that's why I'm bringing it up again. I brought this up this morning. In the life of Enoch, he's the one character that didn't taste the first death. God took them out. And, you know, we, we have this other book out there that nobody, you know, it's not in the canon of uh, scripture or anything else. Very interesting book. I have the book here. Or I read it. Gives you a little kind of an understanding, whether it's true or false. I, I can't wait to get to heaven to talk to Enoch about it. Because, I mean, he's the one that lived it. He's the one that uh, disappeared, so to speak, and didn't have to be told, or we weren't told that he died, but God brought him up, you know, and I, I think that's pretty cool. God's grace was reigning in Romans 5, 20, 21. He believed God. Isn't that what Enoch did? He, Enoch believed God, and, and I look at that, and my reflection on it as long as I got breath, I'm going to believe in God right now, and I'm going to praise God. And I just can't receive all the hoopla that everybody gets entangled with because of the word grace. Either you're saved by grace or you're not. I believe I'm saved by grace. So don't point fingers. You know, I always listen to people. And I don't have to agree with everybody and what they write in books and everything else. The only thing I got to follow and really believe, brothers and sisters, is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Everything else is just a bunch of opinions out here. And every time I go into commentaries, I, I blatantly say it. Everybody's got their own take, especially today in the modern commentaries. And every man's opinion and woman's opinion and everything else. Our opinions don't count. It's God's opinion, his word. And hold on to it. You know, if God says you're saved by grace and grace alone so that nobody can boast, well, be grateful to God that you've been redeemed. And all the, all the rest is, you know, just get up and do the best you can. And sometimes the enemy is there to do one thing, to trip us, you know, but God gives us a way out. So I always tell people right now, what is your excuse? You're not reading your Bible. You're not praying. You're not fasting. You're not giving alms. When he was naked, you didn't clothe somebody. Did you go to the prison and visit people? Did you go to nursing homes and visit people that are locked down? Or you're so, you're so busy like the Joel Osteens living your best life now. Or you got so much money and you got thousands of Christians in third world countries that are starving. 
you know, I hit it hard because we're supposed to be servants of the most high God, you know? I read my Bible. I get convicted when I read the Bible. He walked with God in the midst of a godless society and witnessed for God. Wow. You know, how many people are living in a wigwam and they're not doing anything and yet they know everything about the Bible. Enoch did not die. God raptured him away to heaven. This is the blessed hope for all of us. Not whether it's pre-trip, post-trip, we're saved by grace. That means we're going to go on a trip someday, an everlasting trip. Because God's promises are yea and amen for those that believe. You know, do you believe in rewards? Do you believe in the second throne judgment? Do you believe the scriptures that we all hold in high esteem? That's my question for people nowadays. What do you really believe in? What, a, what a, I, I tell everybody every day, I could do better. I said that to my wife. I, I should take a stack of tracks. I said it this morning in the first group. I said, if you need some John Romans, we'll help you out. I always try to help people out. I believe in evangelism. I believe that if if we lift him up and acknowledge him in all our ways, God's going to draw people to his kingdom. Period. This is the blessed hope of all Christians. And you can, you can go there. Titus chapter 2, verses 11, 12, 13, and 14. How about Thessalonians? I gave that today. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. I'll repeat it. Study to show yourself approved. Titus chapter 2, 11, 12, 13, 14. This all goes along with what I'm preaching this morning about this chapter. Noah means rest. How many of you know that in your heart? The Bible says Noah was a righteous man. You know, when I closed the prayer group this morning, I went to the gospel. You know, I, there's always something in God's word that lines up with what a preacher will talk about. And, you know, when you study the word of God, Jesus says, search the scripture and you will know who I am. You know, what? a lot of preachers preach over and over again. I try to wet everybody's whistle once in a while, and I get into some of the different books in the Bible. And as I study every day, because my, my life is pretty confined right now, you know, when people don't know me that well, but I, I got the awards from Agent Orange and Vietnam and all that baloney. As I, I told people, I'm so grateful to God that I'm still alive. So what am I doing still alive? I got time to talk about Jesus to everybody. This morning, I. I closed the prayer group, and this is going to be the second time I'm closing the message. You know, even so the Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. Jesus was talking, and he was talking to his fathers about the unrepentant cities and places. And, you know, we're going to go right into Noah and right into the fact that God did destroy a lot of things. In fact, the whole earth. It was devastating. He can do that again, too. You know, people talk all day long now about 
nuclear war, and Armageddon, and this and that. And the Lord said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, has revealed them unto the babes. If so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. And this is, you know, the basic grace that God gives to all of us. Jesus was saying, all things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son, but the Father needeth knoweth any man. The Father saved the Son, except the Son and he to whoever the Son will reveal him. And this is the most beautiful words that you could share with people. I always tell people that. Open your Bible and make them read it. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That happened to me 36 years ago. I was pondering about where am I going in my life? And I, I went to my grandmother's notes and I read that, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And he says, take my yoke upon you. In other words, his teaching, his burden upon you and learn of me. Why? Because he says, I am meek. In other words, gentle. And sometimes I'm, I need to be forgiven because I'm a little, a little loony, I guess. Yeah, I can't give it to my PTSD or anything like that because I'm not on psychotropics. I overcame all the drugs and everything the world put me on for many years before I was saved. Now I got to cry out to Jesus Christ every day to sustain me, even when I'm in pain and I can have any pill I want. It's all in my library, my books, my health records. But Jesus says, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Plural. It means it's for everybody to come to Christ. And my last verse here to go along with the fact that we are redeemed and children of the Most High God. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And Lord, we need your grace and mercy. We thank you and praise you. Kind of a long day for me today, Father, but hopefully I'll pay more attention to the prayer group right now going forward to make sure that there's a time place for everything. And thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the brothers and sisters that are patient. Thank you for the ones that are diligently seeking you right now. And all you got to do, brothers and sisters, is the simplest thing, John Romans. Read the Gospel of John, the Book of Romans. Find a church, find a fellowship that's Bible-believing, and God will do the rest. That's what I had to do a long time ago. And in between it all, you start to read the Bible and you start to do what God tells you to do. And the next thing you know, God's revealing the, the things that you could never imagine from healing to deliverance, answered prayer. You know, I was, I was listening to a uh, great testimony about someone that I really liked as a guitarist and I was going back into it, studying the different movements and, and what's been going on in our world today. And what I learned was how the people that get saved, because I was one of them, you end up falling on your knees. Every critical situation in my life is because I humbled myself in front of God in the secret place with weeping and tears and repentance and asking God to forgive me and give me a new start. And you know what? He never fails. 
if that speaks to your heart today, that's all you've got to do. There's no show in it. There's no nothing. You beseech the Lord and he'll carry you. He'll mend the broken heart. He'll even give you some wisdom along the way. So God bless you all. Sorry that we're late putting this up. I had to record the whole thing over again. God bless.